Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. It would be unwise to believe nobody else spoke and said, but God, show mercy. Elijah had spoken. And after three and a half years, Elijah came back again and said, this rain is going to come back. And the Bible says he prayed and prayed and prayed and he saw a cloud like a man's fist. And he told Ahab, saddle your chariot and be on your way. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Physically, there was nothing like that. But from the realm of the spirit, that was a real rainmaker. And the king went and the Bible says that he girded his loins and he ran on barefoot. He overtook the, uh, the, the chariots of Ahab even down to Jezreel. Listen, if people can use divination and program a climate physically, not consulting you whether you are in agreement with them or not, they don't ask everybody in the village democratically, are you ready for rain or not? No, no. A few people have done business with the realm of the spirit and they can agree and manipulate the cloud physically. That means it is within every believer's jurisdiction. Are we together? To program a climate of spiritual possibilities over yourself such that no matter what is happening in Egypt, Goshen can be different. You can program a climate of rainy season even in dry season. Are we together now? But there is a secret that in this kingdom, believers and kings must understand the power of words and the power of speakings as far as programming spiritual climates are concerned. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 14, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 14, the Bible says, a man shall be satisfied with the good, okay, satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Is that in your Bible? And the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. That means a man's satisfaction does not just come from his job. A man's satisfaction does not just come from your mind alone. The Bible says a man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Are we together? In Proverbs chapter 18 let's read 20 and 21 most times people just go to 21 but they don't read 20. let's read 20 together proverbs 18 20 21 ready one to read a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips ah. with the increase of his lips shall he be filled then 21 now death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof they that love death shall benefit from it through their mouth they that love life shall benefit from it he said they that love it it gives you the option but it says you will eat the fruit thereof for sure. Please look up. When we began our experience with God, our faith walk with God, one of the many things that we were taught and gracefully we were taught early was the prophetic implication of the speakings of a believer. Now, most believers have not been trained to understand that the realm of the spirit was designed with words. Are we together? It took words to frame the entire earth. That means the earth only responds to words. Because you see, you look like who and what gave birth to you. If it was words that gave birth to you, then words will have to sustain you. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, it says, Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. 
so that the things which are seen were not made of the things that are visible or do appear words John 1 3 all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made all things not some things were made by him and outside of words was not anything that was made there are many believers who do not know that when the Spirit of God came into your life it's not just that he wants to make you a man and a woman of character in as much as that is important your dominion principally depends on your mastery as far as speaking is concerned that there is a relationship between your ability to speak prophetically and in sync with the word and the will of God and your manifestation many believers have found themselves programming eels the Bible says do not cause your flesh your body to sin because of your mouth hallelujah now every culture I know of and every region I know of among the many things that unite people within that culture is language we learned that in social studies is that true that one of the binders of regions is language we call it tongues or tribes so when we say you are Yoruba it means there is a speaking there may be other aspects of the culture but the most visible aspect that brands people culturally speaking is their speaking do you agree with me there may be other things facial expression physiology you know history and all of that but the principal way you know a Yoruba person is through speakings the principal way you know an Igbo person the principal way you know a Nigerian an American is through words the tongue is a revealer that means just by listening to someone I can write so many things about that person without even meeting him physically are we together if it is true that language reveals culture then it means the kingdom itself should have a culture and a way to communicate that if I hear you speak in a certain way the same way I can look at you and say are you Yoruba there there is a kind of speaking are you Hausa are you from South South are you from this region there is a way a believer should be able to speak that immediately a fellow believer hears you know that this is a child of God you don't need to start probing and say are you born again that may be important but I'm saying the language should already reveal culture when a Nigerian meets another Nigerian in America or Europe aside from the physical physiology as soon as the person begins to speak the intonations the accent he says you are my brother and my sister and immediately total strangers they shake themselves with respect to that foreign environment most believers have not been trained that as a believer in Christ your speakings reveal many things but more importantly your speakings program many things even science and technology today as they continue to advance they are getting to the realm of possibilities through the spoken word is that true so all kinds of gadgets now do not need to be mechanically manned by hand again they respond to speakings and they call it technological advancement so you stand in front of a door and say open and it opens you stand in front of this and you can program all kinds of things just by words if science finally agrees with the faith life that words are important then you must pay attention to it because there are many people right now the snare that you have found yourself in it did not just come by a demonic agency alone it came because of your ignorance knowing that every word that you speak has an effect in the realm of the spirit that will work for you or will work against you if we are together say amen, amen. so the Bible says we are satisfied by the fruit of our lips 
The second thing I want you to know about cultures and regions is that among the many things that bind people sociologically are cliches and certain communications that there could be slangs, there could be all kinds of linguistic expressions, are we together, that bind people within a territory. When you come to Nigeria, there are words that when you use, every Nigerian understands what you are saying. Now, growing up, there's something they call yabin. Pay attention, don't miss this now. Laugh, but let your concentration still be here. Are we together? So what happens is two people will sit down just like they are playing chess and then they will look for the most demeaning, insultive, funny, and ego-tearing description and land it on that person. Then the other person waits for his turn. And so they usually are spectators who keep assessing by their laughter and their commendation who is funnier and who is being demeaned the more. We have those kinds of expressions in our world. And while in many cases it was intended to be a joke, there are many people who do not know that demon spirits and familiar spirits are some of the sponsors of some of these linguistic things that have rested upon regions that people have received sociologically are we together? I don't die, finish. Does that sound like something you say all the time? And while you are saying it, the person you are talking to understands and the realm of the spirit too understands their version of what you are saying. And it is recorded in the realm of the spirit. There are many things we have been trained to say. There are regions in this nation where the only way to show that you are pious is to express mediocrity at you can use words and tear yourself down the moment that happens people feel that you are pious we have embraced some of these things and we do not know that these have been the programmers remember the rainmaker teaching that for every time we do these things we feel it does not matter there are children parents who give birth to children and begin to call them certain names big head idiot where are you and the boy says sir for 10 years that boy was answering idiot by the time the guy gets to 11 years you have programmed a kind of rain what begins to happen to the guy his brain his thinking his creativity deflates to reflect the power of your word and now you begin to wonder why are you such a dull and a stupid child how about the teachers that train children in school? Many people do not understand the power and the implication of words. There are children who go to school and they begin to hear all kinds of things. Demeaning statements from teachers maybe, from their colleagues maybe, and they do not know that it's programming. I'm not just speaking psychology. Spiritually. Are we together? and destroy themselves and put themselves in positions of failure and then we say it does not matter and the realm of the spirit keeps recording it keeps recording it let me tell you the truth in this kingdom ladies and gentlemen kings reign by the dexterity and the excellency of their speakings the bible teaches us to beware what we say the moment the holy ghost is upon you there is power upon everything you say. Do you know one of the reasons why the gift of faith among the nine gifts of the Spirit revealed? The gift of faith does not rest upon people indefinitely. It comes and it goes. You know why? Because under the influence of the gift of faith, anything you say will come to pass. And if the gift of faith remains with you and you are angry, and you tell your wife, may God punish you and may you die. You just meant I am angry. And you see a dead body fall in front of you. Did you not read about, um, what's the, the name now? Those guys, at, um, Ananias and Sapphira. You have lied against the Holy Ghost. Bam, right there. The wife came and did her own right there. 
two of them, they carried their dead bodies hours apart. Where the word of a king is, there is power. So while you were declaring this Abuja self is a useless place, a stupid place, this place, I don't know what kind of place is that. The realm of the spirit receives those words in vials and programs them into a climate. Now, please, I want you, if you don't believe this, you are not a Christian. The realm of the spirit is strict on speakings, especially when the anointing comes upon you. Hallelujah. Jesus made certain profound statements. Among them, he said, destroy this temple and after three days I will build it. Jesus himself, knowing the power and the prophetic implication of words. Words do not only reveal culture. Words program climates. Words program spiritual climates. They can program a climate of possibilities. They can program a climate of impossibilities. Many believers have found themselves saying a lot of things and saying it does not matter. This is how I, this is how we speak in Nigeria, they say. This is how we speak in UK, they say. Hallelujah. There are regions of the world where they call people, they name them by animals and they say it very wonderful. Oh, you are a dog. They, they say that to mean you are my friend, you are my close ally. You don't have to call me a dog to show the level of our friendship. Just, just my opinion. Are we together? And we answer some of these things, no wonder we start behaving like them. Words. The moment you begin to speak, Remember, you are a spiritual rainmaker, if I would use that expression. You are programming something upon your life. In Israel, for those of you who have had the opportunity to travel to Israel, historically, even up until today, when you curse somebody, it is a very big issue in Israel. You know why? Because they were trained from Judaism. They understand the power of the spoken word. When fathers want to bless their children, they don't give them physical things. They call them and from the depth of their spirits, they release prophetic words. What are they doing? Programming their climate. You see that from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to his sons. Why do you go and meet a man of God and you say, sir, bless me. And while you are saying, bless me, you are even putting your head down. What exactly do you expect to happen? He is not releasing anything physical. It's not his saliva you want to come on your head. Yet you are happy. And he says, may God bless you. You lift your hands and your head and say, amen. And you actually believe you received something. Are we together? Words are so powerful. It took words for you to be saved. Not just intention. Not just motive. Wishing to be saved was not enough to change you. You had to use words to verbalize your interest in God, declare your helplessness and to ask for his grace and his mercy. Words are powerful. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The Bible says in the beginning from verse 1, God created the heavens and the earth. Then verse 2 says the earth was without form. Please look up. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. I have taught you that theologically speaking, we call this the gap theory. There is still a lot of haziness between 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2 because it is believed to be many years apart. It is believed that this confusion right here came as a result of the judgment of the then earth. Are we together now? He says, the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3. Now, the surprising thing is that God never discussed the issue of the darkness. When God looks at a chaotic situation, it was only fair enough for him to at, at least analyze. Okay, spirit of the living God, I can see darkness, I can see chaos, I can see this destruction. However, we are going to fix it. Mm -mm. The first statement that he would make 
is light P. and the Bible says there was light the Bible never said darkness fled it says there was light because he did not mention darkness what he called was what gained the emphasis there in that statement there was light immediately when it was time to make man here comes words again let us make man my question is did he have to say it when he had the power to do it i understand speaking light but i mean did he have to say i will do it then start doing it it was wise enough for him to just make man but he said listen this is what we are going to do he spoke it and he did it the same principle you find in genesis 11 when nimrod the son of kush was going to build they already had the materials brick for mortar and slime they would have just started the building but they keep they kept speaking we are going to build are we together now words are very powerful words are not only informative words are creative that means when you speak you are not only speaking for awareness please believers hear me you are not just speaking for enlightenment you are also speaking for creation creation in this kingdom happens at the instance of words that means the believer who is the creator is one who knows how to use words not just to inform people of what you are doing this is one of the reasons why names are powerful because names are not just a means of identification names are prophetic words every time people call your names and speak it they are creating something or enforcing what has been created no wonder Jabez changed his name no wonder Simon you know changed his name God had to change Abraham's name to Abraham because prophetic speakings are very powerful it was at the instance of our speaking through worship that the presence of God mantled this place and things began to happen. Imagine when you come for service, someone sits down quietly and then a prophetic word comes and at the instance of that word, something begins to change. That means that thing could change, but that which makes it change was not yet spoken. Please understand this and you will find out that the results you will begin to command in your life will surprise you. Are we together? Say not before an angel, I made a mistake. In Matthew chapter 12 from verse 34 and 35, please give it to us, Matthew 12, 34 and 35. Jesus is rebuking the people now and he says, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? Aha. Uh -huh. He's taking it a step further now to help us understand that while it is true that your speaking is what creates, controls, and manages your spiritual climate, there is something about your state and your speaking. Your being is where your speaking comes from. Are we together now? He says, oh generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good? That means if you are evil, you will speak evil. If you are good, you will speak good. Your speaking will always be a reflection of your nature. Being evil, speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, Jesus is teaching us now how, how words are framed and formed before spoken. Out of the abundance of the heart, he says, the mouth speaketh. That means the mouth does not speak until the heart is full. When the heart is empty, the mouth cannot speak. But when the heart is full, inevitably, the mouth will begin to speak. 35. It says a good man. Who is that man? A good man. Out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth what? So, good man good heart good things then he says an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things please i want you to follow very carefully there are many believers who 
when they teach about speakings and the power of words as a dominion principle, they do not focus on the heart condition. They just say, change your confession and don't speak negatively. And while that is sincere, the Bible tells us that as powerful as your mouth is, your mouth, your body is a slave to your mouth while your mouth is a slave to your heart. So the most powerful part of you is your heart. Your heart controls your mouth and your mouth controls your body. So when the devil wants to destroy your body, he does not just focus on your mouth first. He goes to your heart. Are we together now? And plants seeds of fear, seeds of defeat, seeds of death, seeds of mediocrity, seeds of limitation. From the abundance of that heart, the mouth will start programming a spiritual climate that has a physical implication. Job said, the thing that I feared has come upon me. It started with his heart, then to his confession. The wife looked at him and said, why don't you curse God and die? Her heart was, her mouth was only a revelation of what was in her heart. So when you look at your wife or your husband and say you are a stupid and useless man, the problem is not what you said. And the answer is not sorry. The answer is transformation. Are we together? Because sorry can be a borrowed word that you can use. The real problem is that that speaking, when you look at your son and say you are a useless boy, you will never become anything. You are a foolish girl, you are a prostitute. And many people, Africa, we are victims of these kinds of things. People become angry and they speak and program destruction over their children, over their subordinates, over the people around them, and they wonder why the continent remains the way it is. Israel is a place that is in a desert, and yet, in that desert, everything grows because they understand the power of speakings. You get there, the first thing you hear is shalom. The peace of God rests upon you. The children have been trained. In other religions of the world, even before a little child starts going into the regular schools with any kind of means and by all means they program certain things into their hearts first hallelujah most believers have not been trained to understand the power and the value of words and the key is not to mechanically speak well please look up this is what I want to correct. You do not speak well just by intention. Your speaking is a product of your heart condition and your state. So you find people who carry a semblance of being cautious. Bless you, good morning. And then the moment something pushes you, your heart pushes away your brain and brings out what is really there. Don't talk to me or just because I'm in Koinonia here. You don't know who I am. Go and ask those who know me. And then people become like wild animals. And later you go back and then you say, sorry, it will not happen again. And your heart says you are joking. Are we together? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It says a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart. That means the man is not good, he is good because of the state of his heart. People are not evil because of what they do. People are evil because of who they are. An evil man, even if an evil man speaks good, is still an evil man. Eventually the heart will betray him. Is someone learning now? This is very powerful. Africa, let me tell you the truth. Nigeria, please listen to me. Now, I'm somebody who is very real. I understand. Politically, the climate is not very favorable. I understand. Economically, the climate is not very favorable. But our mandate is not to keep enforcing the darkness in our environment by sowing our own contribution of darkness. What we are seeing in this nation, what we are seeing in Africa is a cumulative of everybody's contribution. I know you will not like what I'm saying. But don't make a mistake of standing in self-righteousness to believe you did not contribute anything. The stupid boy that you said added to the climate. 
the wicked woman you said added to the climate the realm of the spirit has an assignment of gathering the words and building the climate and we have become negative rainmakers over our destinies there are regions that have alienated themselves and say from this village nobody rises up to go here we are all failures and they did not know that they were prophetic rainmakers there are many business people even in Abuja here who have said I can't succeed I can't rise don't worry and while you are saying it you think it does not matter everybody here listening to me you are a prophetic rainmaker over your destiny if there has been drought and darkness over your life I want you to know that there is something you are neglecting you are a king but you do not understand the power of your scepter your crown and your words hallelujah so this is how I'm going to die this is how my life going to is going to be so I will not get any job in this Abuja I will not get job in this Nigeria in fact it looks like doors will not open up for me let me tell you the truth you can run anywhere to the world if it's still the same you is the same result that will follow you there are we together there are things you will never hear me say about myself there are things you will never hear me say about this ministry there are things you will never hear me say about the body of Christ please listen to me this is more than positive confession we are talking of the mystery of creation becoming a prophetic rainmaker over your destiny that you can stand and in the name of Jesus when you understand this you can lay your hands on your womb and you can begin to declare no arm robber comes out of this womb and while you are speaking the realm of the spirit there is a system of documentation happening hallelujah many people said all kinds of negative things about their lives for me I have chosen that my vista and my template will be that which is consistent with the Word of God it does not matter my background it does not matter where I came from it does not matter who I know or I do not know I understand that the dominion the mystery of exercising kingdom authority demands I will never you won't hear me say oh I'm leading a stubborn people I'm no 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 I won't do that look at the character of God he appears to Gideon a man who is hiding and the first thing he should do is Gideon you are such a foolish young man come out of that place of hiding first this is God now and he says so now has it helped you mm -mm. oh mighty man of valor that means every negative thing you have been hearing about yourself is not God you can you can use this to know who has been talking to you hallelujah is someone learning now Genesis chapter 3 the Bible says now the serpent was more subtle than any creature that was found in the garden please pay attention he said he said to the woman yea had God said ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden next verse and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God had said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest you die listen to Satan now Satan heard what God said now he's about to speak he understood the power of the the creative power of the speakings of men the serpent said ye shall not surely die five for God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil verse 6 look at what immediately began to happen to the woman as a result of the words when the woman saw that the tree was good for food her perception started changing at the instance of that word and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat 
and gave also to her husband with her and he did it seven and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig, fig leaves together and made themselves apron verse 8 and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden I like verse 9 and the Lord called unto Adam and said Adam where are you you know what this means where are you does not mean physically where are you in the realm of the spirit the words that i spoke over you secured you there was a position of authority that could be seen in the realm of the spirit but something happened on earth through words now we don't see you again he doesn't mean where are you hiding in the garden you have you have fallen from a position an ascended position in the spirit where are you verse 9 verse 10 and he said i heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself never forget verse 11 for the rest of your life and he said who told thee that thou was naked keep that question there who told you that you will never get a very good man to marry you uh-huh I've said somewhere that touch you now <laughs> Look up. Who told you that they've forgotten your application? I'm not sure my application. Who told you? Do you know what God is saying here? Everything that enters your heart came through words. That's what he's saying. It is impossible for it to have gotten to your heart. The only vehicle that carries convictions to your heart are words. Who told you? I'm seeing a reaction within your heart. And I'm telling you that how it got there was not through assumptions. Words have a way of transporting realities from this physical realm. You can hear it through your ears, but it does not stop there. It steps into your mind and finally settles in your heart. And begins to program that climate. You become a negative rainmaker programming all kinds of destructive things who told you you are a failure who told you you are not a beautiful lady who told you you are not a handsome guy who told you you are a lazy person who told you you cannot become that prophet who told you you cannot become that great woman who told you your region is a disadvantage you had someone tonight God is speaking to someone you have been hearing many people it's time to hear me you have been hearing the voice of culture you have been hearing the voice of limitations you've been hearing the voice of the devil and even familiar spirits who told you who told you who told you you cannot rise to become that man of god that woman of God who told you you cannot raise children to be great and champions who told you because you came from a background that does not seem to have any comeliness around it that you cannot become a great person God is speaking to someone here someone speaking has entered your heart do you know let me tell you this words are so powerful bar you can hear something in 2001 and think you are free from it and it can remain quietly there it just needs to stand near the door of your progress and remain there you are a useless lady you will not go far and you mean oh no in the name of jesus i i i don't believe what you are saying he still entered and every time you want to rise you hear that voice again you will not amount to anything listen this is where the implication of influence comes in and let me respectfully at this juncture just challenge parents men of god politicians or people who are occupying any position of influence we have to be careful with our communications i know we are humans but we must obtain grace from god you may never understand the implication of your wrong speaking to your child in anger you just told him you are an embarrassment to me i thought you were going to get first class 
it is terrible to know you have two two or even two one shame on you the child may keep quiet but you have programmed a stumbling block a familiar spirit keeps thanking you for one year for making his job easy he comes to land on that word and you deflate the child's passion wanting to rise to a new dimension he says there's no use do you know why the believer is mandated to study scripture for many reasons but among them this is the manual that programs your heart so that from your heart through your mouth you now program your climate is someone understanding this now can i tell you the truth there are many people who died listen carefully many people who died simply because of the ill speaking of others i think i was reading about a, a research that was done on patients that there are patients who when they are sick and in bed if their family members come to surround them you know and encourage them there's a lot of laughter that chances are excellent that they can even live longer even survive that ground do you know why people die in the night because in the night there's full of silence someone can be encouraging you by seven eight nine and then by one two you only hear the voice of darkness and the devil comes through that darkness you are still alive are you not surprised take your last breath and go there are people who would have died since they refused they're nowhere they were sick and sick there from a physical they just said no way there are people today who certain negative things would have come upon them they refused they said in the name of Jesus for as long as I am alive I owe myself that responsibility the rain that comes is the rain I create and let me tell you the truth if you are not creating it someone can help you and I pray that it's not a negative climate they create for you so you find out that the rain of failure the rain of disappointment the rain of closed doors coming upon you and you are wondering what is this what is happening to me only to know that while you slept in the dream that you had someone was speaking negatively as soon as you woke up a negative demonic movie was playing adding to the programming again and then you get up in the morning from your house through the junction to your office you have received one year worth of negative programming you're driving and somebody sees you and the person just looks at you and from afar the person is already stretching his hands towards you and adding words on top and you too you say okay pack pack and let's and all, all you, you are programming climates the wise understand the power and the value of their environment are we together do you know why the Bible says give us Ephesians 5 now you will understand it told you that when you are full of the Holy Ghost there are three things that the Holy Ghost will make you say Ephesians 5 20 19 Ephesians 5 19 please let's hurry up give it to us speaking to yourselves in number one Psalms I leave that one for next year most of you do not know the power of psalms you see these psalms you see is a mystery that man called david psalms he says when the holy ghost comes upon you how do you think david wrote psalms by intelligence no the holy ghost came upon him and he found himself writing things the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of are we together now the Lord is the strength of my life what can man do to me so that confession called Psalms was inspired by the Holy Ghost and he said you can verify the spirit that is influencing you by what you are saying if the Holy Ghost comes upon you you will find yourself speaking Psalms Psalms the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he guides me in the path of righteousness for his namesake psalms 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you call it confession. The Bible calls it Psalms. Understand what I'm teaching you now. That every time you are under the influence of the Holy Ghost, what he does to you is he makes you to begin to speak to yourselves in Psalms. Number two, hymns. You see, eh? do you know why these hymns don't die? There are many songs that are dead. They wrote them last year. They are dead by now before December. Because the depth in the spirit from which they were fetched, it was, it was not anything serious. Some of these hymns you will see 1890 something. Now, of course, there may be some scriptural errors because it was men that wrote it. But let me tell you the truth. Hymns, it does not just mean SS and S alone. It's a prophetic statement. These people that wrote hymns, you see, they were not just musicians. They were inspired of the Holy Ghost. Is someone hearing now? Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drop round are falling. But for the shower. When you were growing up, you used to sing it. But now that you have become a matured African, you left what can lift you. I'm not just saying it must be chanting it, but most people do not know that they have been negative rainmakers to their lives because they have ignored the power of Psalms. Speaking to yourself in Psalms, in hymns. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness I cannot trust the sweetest friend. oh you still remember but only on Jesus name on Christ the solely Please listen, let me tie up something I'm teaching you because what I'm teaching you is very powerful. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit, speaking, speaking in Psalms, speaking in hymns. Then you get to this third dimension, speaking in Speaking in psalms, speaking in hymns, speaking in spiritual songs. They are not just special numbers. You hear me say, You reign, you reign, hello, you reign, you reign, you reign. Na, na, na. What is that? Yeah. 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 Ask Sam who wrote the song that when it came to him, is that his language? Did you not hear the Bible says, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, there are communications that do not belong to this realm, but are needed in this realm. Are we together now? Tongues is one of them. That when someone begins to pray and you are now even praying in tongues it does not make sense but the Bible says you are reacting to the influence of the Spirit and although men may not understand there is a programming happening in the realm of the Spirit spiritual songs hallelujah Listen, then the Bible says something very interesting. It's saying, making melody in your heart. In your heart? 
How do you do that? Your heart has a voice. Is that true? She said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, say not to yourself, who shall ascend? Listen, let me tell you this. These are simple but profound mysteries. Paul would not gather in front of God's people and be wasting their time teaching them jargons. These were the ladders that he followed himself to ascend these realms of strange power. Speaking to yourself in Psalms. Psalms means Psalms. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the Lord watches over the city they watch it in vain when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion hold on that means at any point in your life you begin to sense you know how people sorry for the use of words you know how people throw up something within is what causes it isn't it you start feeling you want to throw up that is how it is in the spirit Shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Here I am. Out of my belly shall flow, shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. From a background where no one has risen show me a man surrounded by failure causes poverty but then you know how to be filled with the spirit that the moment the presence of God comes don't keep quiet the next thing is to begin to speak to yourself in Psalms speak to yourself in hymns and spiritual songs Prophetic rainmakers creating a climate of favor, a climate of glory, a climate of grace, a climate of longevity, a climate of power, a climate of possibilities. Listen, hear me, hear me. Many years ago, when this ministry was at its infancy, I made a prophetic statement by the Spirit and I said we will all be great and that the greater part is we will all know ourselves. It was not a suggestion. It was a prophetic word that came from the depth of the Spirit. Hallelujah. What are you saying in your house? Or what is speaking in your house? Sometimes you are not the one saying it, but you are allowing demonic atmospheres around your house. Negative atmospheres. Let me tell you this. I'm sure it has happened to someone where you are soaking yourself in an atmosphere of worship or a message and then you fall asleep and you find out it still continues with a stronger atmosphere of power and sometimes you wake up under such an intense influence Adam who told you what have you given permission to speak into your life who have you allowed to program your thinking to program your mind to alter you Dear prophet of God, who did you start listening to that you stopped believing in yourself? What did you start listening to that suddenly made you all rules to become a weak person? Words make strong, 
and words make weak words make wise and words make foolish words bring power and words bring limitations listen let me tell you this when I get up in the morning sometimes I walk around room to room every room in my house is an altar I don't care whether it's the toilet whether it's the bathroom you know you can have designated places but it does not matter where sometimes the revelation you need can come in the kitchen you are washing your plates but there is an atmosphere Shani Salika Bragadu Ziata and the Spirit of God says now call that person immediately and you make that call and the person says you are a spiritual man I've been I was just trying to call you and that begins a new season in your life hallelujah can I tell you the truth do you know why many people go to bed and several people have negative demonic atmospheres because they do not pay attention to invest in atmospheres over over seven or eight years ago I preached a message called the law of atmosphere everything that happens on earth is atmosphere dependent destruction is atmosphere dependent breakthrough is atmosphere dependent the growth of your plant agriculturally speaking is atmosphere dependent that means you kill things not by killing them you kill things by taking the atmosphere I mean medical science teaches us that there are advances in medicine right now that are mastering the art of studying viruses and bacteria and certain living organisms they study the habitat that makes them conducive is that true and they create medical mechanisms that try to extract away the atmosphere and that's it it just dies there are many things in my life and your life that have remained because we have kept the atmosphere that promotes it for instance there are many people who come and program negative things in your house because you have not created a system that honors God there are we together now yes some of you your cars are full of all kinds of things you drive for 30 minutes and all you are hearing is something that pollutes and destroys your mind you left your house courageous by the time you got to that place of the interview you were already defeated because you had something who told you who told you when God was sending us to Abuja all I needed to know was God are you in it and then grant the grace listen one of the things that by the grace of God I thank God for the grace to have done is to culture my atmosphere my atmosphere is very strict very strict very very strict very very strict very very strict very very strict you create that because you see many people's destinies depend on your motivation many people's de destinies depend on your inspiration are we together yes. some of us if we check our phones right now and we see what is in your phone both in terms of songs videos etc we will need to plead with you to run and come out right here don't wonder why familiar spirits are, are all around your life they come in response to atmospheres is that true yes sir are we together negative atmospheres ah this nigeria will we ever survive the way this thing is i hope we we'll even see the end of the year and these spirits brood on what you have said I'm teaching you a technology right now koinonia listen I'm not teaching you to ignore realities when you see it no there are times we discuss issues but you must understand that as a spiritual man the modus operandi of creation is that you must fill your heart with the Word of God and out of the abundance of the heart alongside the influence of the spirit you begin to speak 
May God bless you. Somebody comes to see you and says, listen, things are not really working well in my life. You are under the influence of the Spirit. When the Spirit of God came upon Elizabeth, remember the mother of John, what did she begin to do? Speaking. You see it happen everywhere. The moment the Holy Ghost mantles people, they begin to speak. Trying to change your confession without allowing the word of God to work on your heart will only be hypocrisy that does not carry power. There are many people who have tried to do it. Oh, I will try to speak right, but they are not interested. The content of your heart is what inevitably reveals itself through your words. And please hear me. Next time you speak, don't you think you are just using words to explain or using words to inform more than using words as a tool for explanation and information. The most superior use of words is for programming because when God spoke the first word there was no man there yet he spoke so in order of priority and by the law of first mention words are not just a channel for information words are not just a channel for enlightenment the most superior use of words is for creation I'm on my way to better days I'm on my way to better days. That's my confession and I truly believe it. I'm on my way to better days. It is true for me, it is true for you, it is true for Koinonia. You receive a letter. You are being relieved from that job. Ah, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Because the Bible says, listen, every time you don't know what to say, start with atmosphere. Let me teach you a principle. Every time you do not know what to say, just keep quiet. Program the atmosphere. The atmosphere will affect your heart. The heart will affect your speaking. Your speaking will now change or maintain the reality there. Just to let you know that you lost the business, you lost the job. It may be painful, you may cry because we're humans. But while you cry, you can just go and set something. Or for some of you, they may even tell you, you you've lost a loved one. Just like that, God, this person shouldn't have died. And then you go and put something that will program a climate for you. And in the midst of that climate, the Spirit of God. Have you noticed in the atmosphere of worship, you will always hear what he's saying. He will begin to encourage you there is hope for a tree even though it be cut down at the scent of water huh. let hope rise darkness trembles in your please hear me when you understand the prophetic power of this mystery i just taught you indeed you will be a king because you will know how to program things you can imagine as a man of god i get text messages every day some of them good some of them not so nice some of them even conditions about people people in koinonia here and the principles of fatherhood and leadership demands that when something negative happens to someone it touches you and let me tell you there are times you have to train yourself just know that the number one rule for your dominion is atmosphere don't forget this this night the number one rule for your dominion is atmosphere i don't care what is going wrong make sure that you don't lose the atmosphere if you are crying crying in the right cry in the right atmosphere apostle i thought that by now god would have opened that door i thought that by now ah, But Lord, I give you thanks because your word says in all things I give thanks. You are creating an atmosphere. 
father i know that i've looked on to men and it looked like they are not able to help me my uncle gave me a guarantee that the job is coming now the job came and my name is not there father i will not be offended i refuse offense in the name of jesus offense will be a trap that will give the devil access to my life i reject offense in the name of jesus i walk by the law of love but oh god the bible says they looked on to him and their faces were lightened so i look to yahweh yahweh i'm showing you how to change atmospheres my hope is yahweh yahweh Lord, I look to Yahweh. Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh. Just to let you know that they've finally given you the award, still you do not throw the atmosphere. Father, thank you. Praise God from whom all blessings come. Lord, I thank you. You are the giver of this. And the Bible says, whatsoever you do it endures. Therefore, I expect my result to endure. This is how a spiritual man works. Are we together? This is what I declare over Koinonia all the time. In the name of Jesus, I and the ones that God has given me, we are for signs and we are for wonders in Israel. I believe it. When I pray for Koinonia, I pray for Koinonia everywhere. US, Europe, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. As you bless me, you are blessing my people. As you lift me, you are lifting them. Yes, sir. Pharaoh, you must let God's people go. In the name of Jesus. When you hear something negative, don't grumble around and say, no, it cannot be. That's emotions. That's not a spiritual man's approach. A spiritual man does not jump throwing tantrums. You may cry and do all of that, but when all is said and done, atmosphere. Remember again, atmosphere. And the atmosphere begins to play those worship songs and your spirit is getting enlarged and strengthened. And you begin to pray sometimes you begin to pray in the spirit and you may pray for hours until it breaks away that limitation then you begin to prophesy in the name of Jesus the gates of Abuja open up I decree and declare lift up your heads O ye gates you must become a prophet in your destiny thank God for koinonia but this 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 baby pampering you need to grow out of it win yourself and begin to walk with strong mates Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare my finance is blessed. The Lord himself is bringing people to bless me. The work will not suffer. We have supernatural finances. The wisdom of the Spirit is at work in us. Week in, week out. The word of God comes in season where people of discernment speaking to yourself in Psalms. See, this is how we got here. Let me tell you, it is not magic. You are too big to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit and to begin to speak, forget about dominion. Kings reign through their words. Let me give you one more word and then we'll pray. Someone is going to return here with a strange testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 141, two scriptures. God's standard for maturity and perfection is the extent to which you have gained mastery over your speakings. Psalm 131, verse 141 from verse 3. It says, Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. In other words, Lord, grant me self-control. Self-control over my words. To understand the value, the creative value, the programming value of my speakings as the believer in Christ. So that I am not careless in the use of words. I don't program ill, program negative things over my life. Now let me show you a very powerful scripture. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Give us beginning from verse 1. 
I want you to pay attention. This will be my last reading. And then we'll take a few minutes to pray. My brethren, be not many masters knowing that ye shall receive the greater condemnation. Uh-huh. For in many things we offend all. And if a man offend not in word, is that in your Bible? The same is a mature man, entire, whole. God's standard of perfection is the scripture worthiness of your speakings. The degree to which you have cultured your, your, your words, which is a product of the strength of the word resident within you. The Bible says he is able also to bridle the whole body. You now see it there that your words control your body. Three. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. So he's saying you want the body of the horse to obey you. And the area you focus on is not the legs, it's the mouth. And we turn about their whole body through their mouth. Verse 4. Behold, the ships, though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. That means these giant ships, ships that sometimes are bigger than this auditorium, by far, and yet you will see it's a little ruler that controls them. And you can turn the ship literally 360. Verse 5. Even so, in that similitude, the similitude of the horse and the similitude of the sheep, the tongue is a little member. Koinonia, listen please. And boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire. So the tongue is more than an object. It is a fire, the Bible says, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell. Verse 7. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. Geography attests to this. Agriculture attests to this. There is no animal on earth as we know now that has not been tamed by man. We have been able to tame lions, eagles, including microorganisms. But the Bible says, verse 8, in spite of the fact that we have been able to tame all these things, it says, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Nine. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. What a paradox. With the same tongue, you bless him. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. That's what he's saying. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. And the next moment, keep that scripture, please. The next moment, you are finding it, you are cursing people who are made in the same image of the God that you're worshiping. Verse 10. The Bible says, out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Two more verses, 11. Dot a fountain set forth the same place, sweet water and bitter? No. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either can a vine bear figs, so can no fountain yield both fresh and salt water. You know what he's saying? It is within your power to choose that by the agency of the Spirit, if you look at this tongue as small as it is, forget that your mouth is closing it. It is closing many people's destinies. As small as this tongue is, Apostle James was saying this tongue 
the same way a little rudder of a ship can turn that ship left and right based on what the compass says or what the captain wants the same way a horse a horse that is so powerful yet they bridle the tongue and can move it they can force it by doing something to the tongue that means he's saying if your destiny is going wrong remember you are the captain of your destiny you don't have to start pushing the ship to go back what you need to begin to do is to go back how did the prodigal son go back he said to himself that's the starting point of his restoration he came to himself and said not and did it was saying first i will arise and i will go back to my father the moment the spirit of god came upon the four lepers they started speaking you see the pattern everywhere when the holy ghost rests upon people they begin to speak for many of you the power of god comes upon you whether in church whether in your homes and there is an opportunity to program that climate to be a prophetic rainmaker and then you keep quiet no in the name of jesus for as long as i live my body remains in health perfection is my portion by the power of the holy spirit i decree and declare that the word of god upon my lips continue to change nations you go and lay your hands and begin to speak over your office in the name of jesus listen i want you to teach your children i want you to teach them if, if you can guide the people even within your organization that there is a creed and a code of conduct that you speak this is not the issue of christianity if i will use that it is even from a scientific standpoint it's been proven that words heal words are medicinal the bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine is that true but that a broken spirit can dry up the bones I will worship him forever, love him forever because this God is too good. You know, I shared with you a story here, Koinonia, that one time a gentleman was entering into a city and um, two gentlemen actually, and there was a farmer that they met just by the entrance of the city. And one walked to the farmer and said, dear farmer, and he said, yes, how can I help you? And he said, I hear that this city is full of all kinds of things, violence, you know, moral decadence. This city is full of thieves, armed robbers, unserious people. And the farmer kept quiet and said, you are right. And the man passed. A few hours later, another gentleman coming into the city stopped by and said, dear farmer, he said, yes, can I help you? And he said, I hear that this city is full of visionary people. The soil is very good. It is able to produce. And the farmer said, yes. All of it can be found in the same city. In the same Nigeria, where it looks like economically we are going down. In the same Nigeria, where it looks like we are losing our touch governmentally, unfortunately. In the same Nigeria, where it looks like there's darkness and everything. In that same Nigeria, God is raising an army. In that same Nigeria, there are souls that are being saved. In that same Nigeria, are we together now? It is up to you to change your perception by the influence of the Spirit. That when men say there is a casting down, you don't join them to say there is a casting down. The reason why they are down is because they said it. For you, you will say there is a lifting up. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Koinonia, learn to say so. Because when you say so, it becomes so. When you say so, you create it so. When you say so, you become a prophetic rainmaker over your destiny. Walking in abundance, moving in the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. I believe it. That I am walking in abundance, moving in the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, 
kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching